Welcome to Go Get It. Today we will see some basics of DBMS. Basically, I wanted to discuss normalization. But before we jump directly to normalization, one should get well versed with certain terminologies that are frequently used in DBMS. Today we will see relations and functional dependencies. So relation, it is a set of tuples, say A, B, C and D where each element is a member of data domain. Don't get confused with the term data domain. Data domain is nothing but a domain of particular values which is applicable for a certain attribute. From the diagram, you can see the meaning of a tuple and attribute. So tuple, it is made up of set of attributes in a given instance. And this complete set is called as relation. If you have ever wor worked with any DBMS or any kind of database, then you must be knowing tables. So relations are nothing but tables, but in RDBMS, that is Relational Database Management System. Next comes functional dependency. Functional dependency is a constraint between two sets of attributes in a relation from a database. For example, for a given relation R having attributes A, B, C and D, a set of attributes from R is said to be functionally determined another set of attributes only from R and which is denoted in this form. This form it is read as B is determined by A or A determines B, where LHS is called as determinant and the RHS part is called as dependent. Each value of determinant is associated precisely with only one dependent value. Confused? Now let's see an example, but before we move to an example, there is one thumb rule which needs to be applicable all the cases. We need to check the determinant. There are two cases, if a duplicate determinant arrives or if it is not a duplicate. So we have these two scenarios, if we have duplicate determinant or we don't have a duplicate determinant. If determinant is not duplicated, then it is simple. The determinant is a part of functional dependent set. If it is a duplicate determinant, then our next step will be, we have to check on the dependent. The dependent, if it is a duplicate and if it is not duplicate, again two cases. If it is not duplicated, then that complete functional dependent set is not a member of the given relation. If it is a duplicate determinant, that means it belongs to the set of functional dependence which uh, uh, for the uh, current uh, relation. Now let's jump to the example. Here's the example. We have a given relation or uh, you can say it as a table where attributes are A, B and C. Here you can make out the def uh, actual definition of tuples. Your tuple are 1, 2 and 3 makes a tuple for a given instance for the first row. For the second row the tuple is 2, 2 and 3. On the right hand side you can see the possible FDs of this given relation. FDs here means functional dependencies. So here around 21 set of functional dependencies, possible functional dependencies we have derived from the given relation. So, how does we read this? A derives A or A determined by A. B is derived by A. What does this mean now? Now here you can see that this A is nothing but the determinant part and this B is nothing but the dependent part. So as the flowchart in the previous slide it says, we have to check first whether the determinant is duplicate or not to determine whether the given functional dependency is valid or not. 
Now let's say he, well, let's apply this flowchart or the algorithm in this relation. So we say B is derived by A. So for this instance we have 1. 1 derives 2. Very well. We'll check for the duplicate entries in the attribute set A. We don't have any duplicate entries. That means it flows to the no condition and it goes that member of FD. So here you can see that 1 ident uh, uniquely identifies 2, 2 identi uh, uniquely identifies 2. Now let's take another example from here only. We have B as determinant now and A as dependent. What does this mean now? That B uniquely identifies A. Now let's check it out. So here you can notice that we have duplicate determinant case here. That means it will falls under this condition that it goes to check the dependent values so 2 uniquely identifies 1 again this is a duplicate determinant which is having a non-duplicated dependent so that means from the flow chart it says it is not a member of FD for similarly, this 2 uniquely identifies 3 which is not valid. So as the definition of functional dependency says, a set of attributes from the given relation R is said to be functionally determined another set of attributes from the same relation. And again, each value of determinant is associated with precisely one value of dependent. I hope this makes you clear the functional dependency concept. For instance, one more example, AC gives B means the determinant part is made up of two attributes here. A and C uniquely identifies B. So here you can notice that 1 and 3 uniquely identifies 2, 2 and 3 uniquely identifies 2. 3 and 3 uniquely identifies 2. So there is no repetition of any of the determinant part. So that means this AC derives B is a valid functional dependency for the given relation. I hope you are clear with the concept of relation and functional dependencies. In the upcoming series of videos, we will discuss about the normalization and the related concepts. Thanks for listening. Keep watching, subscribe for more videos. Thank you.